Hey guys, I'm going to try making a new kind of video here. For those of you who don't know, I'm uh, personally very heavily involved in tournament PvP in EVE, and my alliance, who are the Tuskers, were the um, winners of Alliance Tournament 14 last year. I've personally, I've been a member of the Tuskers tournament team leadership for the past three years, so I thought I'd try to give some tournament commentary uh, from the perspective of one who's not only been involved with an AT team uh, pretty heavily for the last few years, but also someone who's been involved in the decision-making process for a very high-level tournament team. Uh, we also have uh, one thing that's fairly new is this tournament 3D viewer who some uh, some magnificent bastard made. <laughs> like, really, whoever made this is awesome. Um, and this lets you view basically any match from the past, like, th three alliance tournaments and Neos and Amar championships and, and all that good stuff um, in, in a replay in a 3D viewer so you can see everyone's position and uh, and how they were piloting in the tournament, so which gives a good way to watch replays. Um, so I thought I'd play this from one of our tournament matches and just give some commentary. Probably like this video would only appeal to maybe a dozen tournament nerds out there, but that's fine. I know there's more people like me out there, so it's all good. Um, the match I've chosen here is one of our matches from Alliance Tournament 14, and it's the Tuskers versus Waffles. It's the f our first match from the first week in Alliance Tournament 14, and um, probably it's not the greatest match, but one reason I chose this is because I have c I collected fraps from this match, which is the only match that I frapsed, and I'll include the fraps from this from the from the end, and it's. Um, It'll be a video that we've never released before, so I think some people might want to see that, see that too. Um, just to give some background on this match, like I said, this this is the first match of the AT on opening day, and we knew th well in advance because the brackets come out, you know, like maybe a month before the tournament actually starts, that our opponent was going to be Waffles, and um, I mean. I mean no respect, no disrespect, sorry, to uh, to Waffles in any way whatsoever. Um, I do respect Waffles quite a bit. But um, they were a team that we kind of, we collectively felt that we should, we should beat them. And, um, but regardless of that, we've also felt that, like, if we were to do st something stupid, that we could lose. So, because of that, and because like it's the first week and you have seen nothing from your opponent the first match is always kind of scary and because you you just have no idea what to expect and um, the attitude of our team very much is that we really don't take any opponent lightly we take any every opponent very very seriously and um, we don't like for example we don't bring trolley setups just because we think we'll win easily like that's just not something we ever do and not only that, but we also <clears throat> we also spent as much time as possible like trying to spy on waffles. So, like the tournament itself is known for metagaming of that nature, and um, the waffles were were very active on CC attending the test open practices. So whenever they do that, we'd usually have someone just spying on them, and um, that gave us the opportunity to not only like see what kind of setups they bring, but also like. Mm -hmm observe their piloting tendencies and things like that so and um, that information that we gathered during that time actually did help us in this match I would say to some degree um, we're also kind of paranoid for other reasons like we we also felt that um, it was a possibility that Pandemic Legion would feed a set of waffles and people in PL might think that this is funny but um, we f we felt that if PL were to do that, they'd feed a setup that was designed for Waffles to kill our flagship while losing the match. Um, so we wanted to be <laughs> prepared for a setup like that one. And uh, kind of what we envisioned was 
something actually not too different from what Waffles ended up bringing, but we thought they might bring a setup with like a shitload of bombers or some uh, like whole tank cruise missile battleships plus six bombers or you know something like that or like some all out rush setup like kind of like what they ended up bringing here. So um, so we were kind of preparing for that in the setup that we brought, and um, I think we had a couple maybe good reasons to be paranoid maybe. Maybe I don't know, but um, what I can tell you is that the year before in Alliance Tournament 13, when Hydra Reloaded were still around, um, our team actually faced Hydra Reloaded in the tournament, and PL fed a setup, one of their setups to us to use against Hydra, and um, and maybe I don't know. Maybe this is a bit arrogant for me to say this, but we felt that PL would think that our team was one of the biggest threats in this alliance tournament. So, because of that, we thought that they might feed some setups to our opponents. And um, like of all the teams that we were facing, like Waffles, if they were to feed a setup to Waffles, like we thought that Waffles might actually listen to them and actually bring the setup that they were telling them to bring. Um, on top of that, like because of the r the rule set for this particular alliance tournament, the, um, we believed at the start of the tournament, and and I would say this ended up being true that um, preserving our flagship would be extremely important. Like our flagship was a Valgorn, and we thought that um, like losing our flagship, especially in like the first match of the tournament, would like just be completely devastating for our entire tournament run so and um, we also thought that PL would know that <laughs> and thus would want to kill it so um, so we thought that because of that that PL would feed a setup kind of like this one two waffles and just try to kill our flagship now I'll, I'll just be clear I don't think PL fed this setup to waffles like I don't think they actually did that but we thought it was a possibility and um so we had that in mind. That was actually one of our biggest considerations for this match, and one of our biggest worries. Um, so yeah, so like I said, because of that, we did not want to bring our flagship. And um, the Waffles flagship was a Typhoon fleet, and which is an armor battleship. Well, you can fit it as a shield, but it's almost always, like, unless it's a shit fit, it's usually fit armor. And... Um, so because of that, we kind of felt that the Waffles would favor armor setups. And uh, because we didn't want to bring our Balgorn, our flagship anyway, like, we just banned Armor Ludgy. Because uh, we thought that it would might take them out of their out of their comfort zone, and we could just bring one of our one of our shield setups to use against them. Um, like, when we spied on them, they had... One of their setups, I think, was... Uh, a somewhat generic Slepnir based like Mimitar Rush type of setup and we kind of felt okay about facing that and we thought that if we banned Armor Lodgy that they might bring it but um, we, I mean you don't really know what they, what people are going to do but we thought that that was a good good possibility and that we would probably win that matchup um, so that kind of influenced the ban choices that uh, that we did uh, Waffles ended up banning Balgorn Scimitar. Um, I don't know why they chose this set of bands. Like I can only speculate, but since we had a Balgorn as our flagship and we can just circumvent this band, maybe they thought maybe they were trying to bait it out and kill it with this setup. Like I don't know. I I really can't drop it, but uh, especially looking at what they have here. But like I I don't know why else they would ban the Balgorn. It just doesn't make any other sense otherwise. And. Um, Scimitar, I guess you ban. If you ban Guardian and Neros and you ban Scimitar, then you've banned, like, most of the best Logi ships, apart from the Basilisk and the Atana. The Basilisk is kind of inferior in a lot of ways. Um, the Atana is pretty sweet, but uh, not most teams don't have one. We actually did have one, but we decided not to use it here. Um, so we just brought our Basilisk instead. Um... So the setup we brought, I'll just talk a little bit about that, I guess, is um, we brought a setup with uh, with a Fiend in it, and it's actually me flying the Fiend here. 
and um, which is another reason why I wanted to show off the fraps for this match because it's not every day you get to fly an AT ship. Um, and um, we wanted we kind of like th this was kind of something I pushed for when we were deciding what what comp to bring. I wanted to show off the fiends early on in the tournament um, because I thought that later on that if if we were to show this off and like just win this match easily that other teams would see the fiend as a big threat and just ban it versus us um, we personally like the best setups that we had in this tournament did not use the fiend so like people using a, one of their bans to ban a fiend against us we didn't we thought that that would be okay for the most part because we didn't really um, see ourselves using the fiend again in the near term. We had some other setups that used the fiend, but we didn't really foresee using them for for a number of reasons that I won't really get into. Um, so I wanted to show off the fiend kind of as a band bait, and I also felt that this setup would be good against waffles for a number of reasons. Just because it has um, it has a shitload of projected DPS, which is sometimes good, depending on what your opponents bring. And against what Waffles brought, this this setup was almost perfect, I would say. And it ended up working very well for us. Um, in addition to the fiend, uh, we also had um, a lot of projected DPS. We had a Navy Scorpion with cruise missiles, two Slepnirs, which are not the more generic um, AC XL ASP Slepnirs. These are actually artillery Slepnirs. And um, we had two light missile flight catchers with good range, good anti-support ability, and two uh, mana cores which have uh, obviously any bomber has good long range DPS, about 500 DPS per bomber or so. And um, on top of that we brought a crucifier which is kind of uh, Another thing we brought, like just specifically for this instance, because one setup that we thought Waffles might bring, <laughs> like I said, in order to kill like a flagship or something, was a setup with like f four cruise missile battleships plus like six bombers, w which is a setup we'd seen people bring before at like test open practices and things like that. And if they if they had brought that setup and just decided to shoot one of our artillery slepnirs, like our slepnir would die. Like no question about it. Even if we had managed to kill all their all their bombers, like four cruise missile battleships shooting an artillery slepnir, the slepnir will die. But to reduce the risk of that happening, if we just have a crucifier with a bunch of guidance disruptors and you just throw guidance disruptors on their battleships, then that the slepnir will probably live. So like the crucifier was just brought basically just for that reason. Just like in case Waffles brought something like that, then we'd have an answer for it with the crucifier. And um, because it's just a three point, it's just one three point ship, and like it's not that big of a concession to bring something like that. And it turned out, I mean, just looking at what what waffles have, like they have all their core ships are blaster ships, so the cruise fire is like completely useless. But that's fine. It still brings like a couple of ECM drones, I guess. That's pretty much all. It did. Once the bomb, once their bombers died, like the cruise fire, like did, did nothing for us, basically. Um, now, personally, like looking at what Waffles brought, they brought uh, six blaster ships in the form of two Mega Navies, two Brutix Navies, two regular Brutixes, and four bombers. So they have um, they have a very aggressive setup, a, a very all-in setup, I would say. Like they're, they're just really gambling on us bringing like something very specific in order to win. I think, and considering what we brought and what they brought, like I personally think that Waffles had almost no chance to win. And um, when I start playing this match you'll, you'll, and you see the way things unfold, you'll see like very quickly why that why that is the case. So like I can only sp like I can't speak for them. I don't know anybody on their team and I don't know why they brought this setup. But my guess is they were trying to Maybe they thought we'd bring something like a conventional Mimitar rush with like auto cannon slap mirrors instead of artillery ones. Like, and if we had done that, and we rush our like slap mirrors into their like six blaster ships here, the slap mirrors will die. Um, 
and their setup is actually not a bad counter to like a Mimitar Rush type of thing, or against other teams that have no projection, because um, although they have no Logi in their comp, they have a lot of DPS, and all their core ships ended up being hull tanked, so they have a lot of EHP buffer. So they can, against other brawling setups, they could trade well, but because our setup is actually a kitier one with more projection, um, things kind of uh, worked in our favor there. And mostly what I'll talk about is like how the how that how our setup worked to our advantage in this particular match. So um, what's next? I'll talk about warp in. So like Waffle is correctly I think just warped in all their blaster ships at zero. Like they considering what there's there's no reason to warp in at any range other than zero. Like considering what they brought, like warping in at longer range would be stupid. They're gonna rush in no matter what we we brought they're going to just approach and try to kill something so it's it behooves them to be as close to us as possible and they accomplish that by warping in at zero and because bombers have better projection and because they're much more lightly tanked they just warped them in at long range so th I think their warp ins are perfectly okay um, our warp ins uh, we're the Tuskers our team are the red team here uh, we came in at more staggered ranges we brought in our Logi and our bombers and our crucifier in at long range, which is fine. Um, we brought in other stuff at staggered ranges a little bit closer. I think our Scorp Navy and our and my fiend came in at twenty, and the Slepnirs and the Flycatchers came in at thirty. And um, this probably looks, considering what Waffles have, this probably looks like a really stupid idea. But um, I have to like remind everyone that in, in the tournament you have you have no idea what your opponents are going to bring or what your opponents have until y you land on grid and at that point you've already made your warping decisions and you have to try to think of like all the possibilities that your opponent could have and there are different kinds of setups that waffles could have brought like if they had um, a kitier setup that was at longer range then, then we'd want our scorpion navy to be closer to them um, if they had like a less aggressive rush setup, like a Mimitar rush or something, then we'd probably want a couple of our ships with tackle, like the Scorp Navy and the Fiend, to be closer, so that they could screen their sh their um, their core ships away from our Logi and things like that. Um, as it stands, like obviously, like we 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 would be much better off like just having everything at fifty, but. When you have no idea what your opponent has, you kind of have to try to cover all your bases. So we did it by um, having these staggered weapons. And um, so I think the strategy that needs to be used by both teams in this match is pretty straightforward. For for waffles, they just want to approach F1. <laughs> Basically, they just want to grab what they can and and just kill it and and just repeat. Like ideally, they'd want to rush in grab one of these ships here, kill it, and then move to the next target, kill it, move it to the next target, kill it. And they want to do that as quickly as possible before um, we're able to either move away or before we're able to kill too much of their DPS ships. And, um, and for what we need to do, we just need to move back and just keep at range because our team has much better projection than theirs. We just need to stay at our optimal range and just work through their DPS ships. And basically, because they don't have Logi, what we decided to do was basically to work from the bottom up and just drop their ships with the lowest EHP buffer um, and just work our way up towards the Mega Navies. So we started off by killing their bombers first, and then followed by the Brudixes, then the Brudix Navies, then the Mega Navies. We're just trying to kill ships as fast as possible so that we can uh, remove their DPS from the field, basically. And and what waffles are going to do is, I think what what they decided to do here is, um, actually well, I'll just start playing the video. What the hell? Uh, so the match starts and basically our entire team is just trying to run away, and they're just approaching, um, right on our Scorpion Navy, which is, I think is is an okay decision by them. Um, so here they get on top of our SI. So, what I personally thought, like, because I'm flying the fiend here, and I'm, 
it's worth like more than all the rest of the assets I owned in Eve, at least at the time combined. <laughs> I thought they'd just try to like approach my fiend and kill it and just kind of claim a moral victory by just killing an AT ship. Um, so I was just legging it like uh, away from them as fast as I possibly could. But um, well, instead of what Waffles decided to do was just go for a Scorp Navy. And I think that's actually, considering the circumstances, it's probably not the worst thing they could have done. Um, although it turned out that uh, the Scorpion Navy is probably the tankiest ship in our entire setup because of the way we chose to fit it for this match. But um, the Scorpion Navy, if you, if you look at what we have and what they had, um, the only ship that they can be guaranteed to catch and get everything on top of is the Scorpion Navy. Like all the rest of our ships, like the the Slepnirs and the Flycatchers and stuff, are are f way faster than any ship in their entire comp. And the Fiend is also extremely difficult to pin down because it has the 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 Sancha AB bonus, plus it has a 37 kilometer range Hicks cram, so it can basically delay things getting on top of it. And even if it fails, like the the Fiend's resist profile is just ridiculous, and it has the AB bonus, and if it's an XLESB. And so, like, th I don't know. I'd, it would be very difficult. Even if they, if they had everything at zero on a fiend, I think it would be difficult to kill it through Lodge Europe's. So, probably their decision there to go for the Scarp Navy is okay. They just kind of have to, to go for it and just hope that they can kill it. Like I said, even though it's the tankiest ship on our setup, and it's the. Um, and it has a highest CHP buffer. Like, they, they just don't have much of a choice here. And um, so anyway, we're 18 seconds into the match here, and they've gone for a Scorp Navy. Like most of our, most of the rest of our core ships have just run straight away from them. Um, we have one of our flycatchers here, uh, Mr. Merum. He's he's moving very aggressively around the side towards the back line of Waffles, and I would say that um, normally, like you don't want to commit a flycatcher like this because if they decide to shoot at it, it like if your opponent decides to shoot at it, it it's moving away from right range and it's not the tankiest ship so it will probably die but in this particular case um, waffles in their entire setup they have nothing that is any threat whatsoever to a flycatcher and um, we we recognized this during the planning phase for this match and so we decided that we just have the flycatchers just charge for the back line and kill bombers and you can already see that one purifier has died. 18 seconds into the match, they've already lost a bomber. And that's partly because of the way that we approach this with the flycatchers running towards the back line and just killing bombers. And also because of the fact that Waffles, like, they did, the, like, to their credit, they just went for it. But the, all their bombers here were fit with polarized missile launchers. And what a polarized launcher does is, um, if you don't know, it, it does, like, redonkulous DPS, but by fitting a polarized launcher to your bomber, it lowers all your resist to zero. So basically, like, two light missile volleys from a flycatcher and a bomber's dead. Like, and that's that's basically that. So um, so you'll see their bombers drop very quickly here. And, when, and without their bombers, that... Like, the four bombers on their setup probably wreck... Probably, I would say maybe 2,400 DPS cold against the Scorp Navy. So it's it's really is does turn out to be the difference between the Scorp Navy living and dying, as you'll see later. The at this moment the Scorp Navy is not taking that much damage, but um, really it's still like all the ships here are are, are still getting on top of it. And he's going to start taking some serious serious blaster damage later. Um. Alright, and as far as our core ships, like, we had our bombers and the Scorp Navy shooting at the Brudix. So the Brudix, this first Brudix is going to be the, um, their, their first core ship to die. And uh, then we'll move on to the second Brudix after that. So I'll just keep playing. We still have things moving away, but um, at th this moment we kind of start to recognize that w what Waffles is going to do, so things... Uh, rather than just running away, things are kind of moving back into position to stay in range to apply their max damage. And now the th the first Brudix is starting to drop, and they've lost three out of four of their bombers. 
and um, let me stop it here again. So now, um, now they've got all their ships on top of the the Scorp Navy, and at this point, we started off by just running, ev having everything run away, but. Um, but uh, regardless of that, Waffles managed to get everything on our Scorp Navy, and um, and th basically that's going to happen. Like the Scorp Navy is slow, and there's nothing we can do to stop that. Maybe maybe we could have delayed it by warping it in at longer range. But if they decide that they want all their ships on top of the Scorp Navy, they're going to get all their ships on top of the Scorp Navy, and there's not really anything that we could do to to stop it. Um, Beyond that, now we have not just Marin but also Behemoth. We have both uh, flycatchers in their back line, just dropping all their bombers. Three bombers are dead. The fourth one's going to die very soon. And um, we also like mostly identified what their game plan was there by this point. And rather than like having our ships continue to run away, we started to move back into our optimal range so that we could apply our full damage. In particular, um, because I saw that. They weren't going to go for my fiend. Like I knew, I knew at that point I was safe. So I struck, moved back into within about uh, 30 kilometers of their blob, so I could focus on using my hick scram to at least immobilize some of their ships. And also at this range, I can apply my full damage with uh, scorch crystals from pulse lasers. So let's keep going. Um, at this point, I noticed that one of their Brutix navies was kind of drifted away from the blob and it was uh, separated from the Scorp navy. This is this guy um, Calderon here. So when I noticed that, I immediately just put my Hickscram on him to, to keep him immobilized away from everything else. So um, in this case, he's not really accomplishing much of anything by just being isolated like that. So uh, it's a good use of the the Hector in this case, and this is one of the good things about Hicks, especially against brawling setups at that time. You get to just like immobilize, especially brawling setups away from everything, and once you do that, they're not really able to do much of anything. So now here we've uh, we've we've cleared their bombers, we've cleared both of their Brudixes. Uh We're working on the first Brudix navy, and now um, I want to say one more thing about the way we're positioned. At this point we know they're just gonna, st they've fully committed to the Scorp Navy so we know they're gonna stay there and just until they kill it because um, well that's what at least what they're expecting. Like if, if they were to break off the Scorp Navy and instead try to chase something else that would be really stupid. So we figured they'd s just stay where they are until the Scorp Navy died. Um, at this point, we're kind of you, you see like all the all of our ships, all of our red ships are 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 completely spread out, like encircling their entire comp, but they're still within each of their optimal ranges, just applying full damage to whatever the the primary is, which in this case is is uh, this guy's predict navy here. Now, um, the way we're positioned is, is for a couple of reasons. So, so first, there's, there's no reason for anybody to be anywhere near their blob except for my fiend. And um, I'm still perfectly safe, even though I'm kind of close to them. I'm still perfectly safe where I am because if they were to decide to chase me, I could just run away, and um, I could just like juggle my hickscram between like all the remaining ships, and I'm I'm pretty sure they could not catch me even if they wanted to. Um, also, like everybody's spread out. We're, like we're not anchoring on one guy. Everybody's spread out. Everybody's piloting their own ship and staying kind of far away from one another. And the reason that we're doing that is because, like, let's say the Scorpion Navy were to die, like right now. Um, the next thing that Waffles would do after that is they'd pick one of our ships and just have everything run towards it and try to kill it. And, um. Like let's say let's say they're going to go for Suleiman and Slepnir, Like after that, they they have to not only close this whole distance, like from where they are to where he is, which is like probably at least forty to fifty k from where they are. But probably when they start doing that, he's going to recognize that they're charging for him, and when he sees that, he's going to start running away, 
which further increases the amount of time that it will take for their comp to catch him. And also, when they're moving, they're, all their ships are moving towards him to kill him. Like everybody else is going to see that, and they're just going to run away from where the from where they're moving to. So if they're moving towards him, like everybody else is going to run away, like often in this direction somewhere. So what that accomplishes is that like they have to waste time not only moving to him, but if they were to kill the Scorp Navy and then catch Suleiman and then kill him, then they have to waste more time moving to the next target and to the next target and to the next target over and over and over again, and. Um, that projection that our comp has is really our big advantage versus them. Like, overall, their setup is probably tankier, or at least has more EHP buffer. Um, and if they were to get like all their ships on top of, if we were all like, like let's say we were all anchoring on Suleiman, and they move towards him and try to catch him, not only will they catch him, they'll catch everybody in their in our entire comp because they can just spread scrams between everybody. And so while they're killing Suleiman, then after they kill him, they just kill the next guy and the next guy and the next guy. But by having everybody spread out like this, they have to waste time moving from one guy to the next guy to the next guy to the next guy. And the f the projection that our comp has is really our big advantage versus them. So we have to use it. Like we have to, we have to pilot ourselves like this. We have to stay at range, and we have to make it difficult for them to catch us. And that's really our key to winning. Um. It also turned out in this particular case, I guess I'll just say it now, we we, we really over-tanked our Navy Scorpion for this match. Like, normally our Scorpion, I think, would have two Hardeners plus an XLASB. In this match, we had three Hardeners plus an XLASB, and we had a Kinetic Resist Rig. So it was actually fairly well tanked against, like, Kinetic Thermal Damage that Waffles have here, um, which is probably, like... I think I think it's a big difference between him like being alive here and being dead. Probably if we hadn't done that, if it was our normal scorpion fit, he, probably right now he'd be dead, is my guess. But um, I think because of the fit that we had, he was able to reload his XLSB one time, and uh, just was able to stay alive for uh, for a lot longer. So I'll just play it out. Um, I'll just play it out here. The scorpion navy is getting low on shields. Um, but they've, like, they've just lost too much by this point. And uh, the Scorpion Navy will die eventually, but it, they at that point they'll just have two um, or just one Mega Navy left, and it's really just it's really just not enough. Like even if he were to die right now, they I think like two Mega Navies are slower than everything in our entire setup, so there's no way they'd catch anything else. Um. So yeah, that's that's about it. I'm just chilling at 30 kilometers here, just keeping this, whatever the primary is, six grams, so that uh, everything else can just rain damage upon it. <laughs> and I think uh, I think somewhere around here, the Scorp Navy reloaded his his XLASB, but um, also our Basilisk was had been basically just repping all out on this Scorp Navy this entire time and he was starting to run out of cap um, which is why you see reps dropping from him periodically just because he has no cap to run his own reps um, yeah so now the Brutix navies are dead uh, they have no links left in their setup um, because their whole tank uh, resist links don't really do anything but they could have speed links or sig links which would help them tank our damage a little bit, so getting those links off the field also helps quite a bit, I think. And uh, the Mega Navies, uh, although they're really tanky and they do a lot of damage, they're not really any threat at this point. Like right now, my Fiend, I could just juggle my Hickscram between both Mega Navies and keep them both immobilized like 30 kilometers away from me forever and they'd basically never be able to kill anything. Um, so they worked through the, the Navy Scorpion like right as the first Mega Navy died, and so right now I'm just hick scramming the, the last Mega Navy and just like, I think I just use keep at range 30 kilometers just to stay away from it. And that's basically GG. We still have most of our DPS left here, so um, 
it doesn't take that long if we're all focusing on the mega navy for it to for it to pop all right so like i said um after this that's that's basically all i have to say about the match so uh so after this i'll uh, i'll just attach the the fraps that i saved from me piloting the fiend um at the end of this video so uh enjoy Any issues? Yep, so uh, just lock on a, a friendly guy and just check that, like, Mam says, your lot targets are where you think they should be. Everyone should have a watch list. Uh, put the latch at the top of your watch list for this one. Any issues uh, anyone has? Is everyone's damage uh, in the fitting window roughly what they're expecting, EHP roughly what they're expecting, targeting range of those kind of things, roughly what you're expecting? It's higher than what it was on TD. No, you got... Implants. Which makes sense, because implants... So. I have the absolute max 635.7, I think you said the same. Cool, at this point I suggest you minimize like chat clients you've got open, yeah? You shouldn't need anything. Um, just make sure you can see local because that's where countdowns will appear. If you've got a tournament over you like I have, uh, make sure you've got uh, talk to that now at this point, okay? Eric, can everyone see the beacon, Celestial Beacon called Battle Arena 1? Yep. Great. We did, of course, start locking the freaking beacon, which is on top of us, and it's taking three minutes to lock. Nice. <laughs> right, so does anyone need me to repeat warping ranges once we're given the go-ahead to warp? Has, everyone, has anyone got any questions about the warping ranges? Everyone check to make sure if you mouse over the warp to within icon when you've got oh, you selected item thingy, it should say warp to within zero meters. Anyone got something strange? Yeah, even for me it says zero. Great. Make sure your hotkeys are working. Okay. Uh, warp now, please. So, does anyone need me to repeat? So, Fiend, Scorp Navy are coming at 20, Slapnears, Flycatchers, 30, Bombers, Crucifier, Logistics, 50. Uh, warp now. Mams and warp. Call out when uh, call out when you see a ship which isn't star and isn't what is love. bazzi has got a different name. That's fine then. Yeah. Just us on scan for now. Uh, Basilisk. Oh no, that does. We tag zero when we land as well, please. Yes. Verify. Pound. Pound. Lots of bombers. This Bricks. is real good. Bricks navy. Bricks navy. <laughs> good flex of assassin. Yeah. Okay, just shut the shot, guys. Let me just think. Bricks Navy, the first thing I need to do is look at, see if the, top, uh, the bombers have uh, torps. They are running Mega Navies, Bricks Navies. They're running probably Blaster Bricks Navies. Uh, they have a no, they probably have a no logic comp, okay? Judging by the fact they have three, yep. two Bricks Navies, two Mega Navies, and uh, a Brutex. Uh, there's a good chance that... Um... Brutex is a blaster, bombers don't have any bombs. Okay, cool. It's a good chance. Uh, Tebble, you need to move away to start off with. Same with Ido, okay? Uh, which, so, Bombers and the... Um, uh, no, but I'm saying the cruisers, are, they have no Lodgy. So, our cruisers, our Scorp Navy and the Bombers will be going straight for the Brutix of Gilear, okay? Uh, Ido, can you focus hit points between the... If you could drop the Bombers... No, the, the, select, the select maze of the flycatchers will drop the bombers, the biggest oh, stuff. Oh, copy that. Okay. Select maze of the flycatchers will be dropping bombers, okay? Uh, hoodie, let's not move into them, okay? Oh, I we'll have to burn away like crazy, right? We'll burn away and we'll try dropping bombers. If we can't, we just swap to the Brux Navy. Roger. You can send your... No, no, Even the... Scorp should burn away from for, for, yes, for every, the starters. Yes, yes, everything moves away. Scorp Navy and the... Oh, there's two Bricks Navy. Bricks is... okay. Scorp Navy and the bombers will be going for Brutix of Gilir Sutsekou. How do you say his name? Galia. Galia, yeah. 
I um, suggest moving beacons from your view at this point, guys, if you still have them. Beacons okay. tagged at zero. Guys, bombers and shit do not a boundary. Fire catches, you're burning away with the same with us. Once they move, can you check the bricks as they all blast it? All blasters. Okay. Yes. Uh, I know priority is going to be hick scramming the battle sh um, the Bruics neighbors, I would say, actually. Yeah, if Just you hick scram anything that's closest. Yeah. Yep. You, ha you happy with bombers loading faction, or do you want to load javelin to move away from Load Load javelin to be on the safe side, yeah. You're moving away, okay? okay flycatchers, okay. once they've committed in, the flycatchers will go around and start dropping bombers, yeah. But flycatchers... Faction should be fine. Uh, yeah, fine. Fa you can use faction, yeah. Okay. Just make sure you don't burn out of range and don't boundaries, for the love of God. Mm -hmm. Any questions on what we're doing? So, primary... Uh, bo uh, so, bombers and the Scorp Navy and the Fiend, I guess, would go for Galea Sutsuku in the Bruix. Once they get on top of you, I'd always suggest not using your hit point, okay? That they can let you fully rep you. Um, the priority uh, table is to stop a Mega Navy if it's going to get on top of the ladder. We have an MWD Bassy, guys. We do not have an AB Bassy, okay? Like, I, sh I should be fine. I'm more worried about Ida or uh, Table. Yes. Because if they all get on top of you, you will die. Yes, if they get to our fiend, we will lose the uh, possibly lose the fiend. Well, fiend should be able to keep scrum away at least, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's faster than everything, so he should never get caught. Tons of VCM drones. Tons of VCM drones. Uh, put them in the brutex holes, okay? So t uh, hoodie, uh, galir, brutex. Uh, mm -hmm. Jack, just spread your uh, TD, your GDs amongst the bombers, obviously. Yeah. Priority will be the purifier instead of the hounds, okay? So two purifiers and a hound. May I make a suggestion? Yes, what? Um, uh, the flycatchers could probably go to the side at the start and start dropping bombers immediately. There's yes, no exactly, threat to them. Exactly. So, yeah, so, we we no, should but, get around easy. Yes, you'll, but, yeah. Flycatchers go around stocking bombs, priorities kill the purifiers, then the hounds, okay? Um, Hoodie, I'm suggesting. Actually, we've 30, 30, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Links on now. Hoodie, are we going to go for pure five Tyron, okay? Yeah. And then we're going to probably start moving straight to battle onto mm -hmm. the. Uh, about Burks's, yeah? Has anyone got any questions on what we're doing? Table, don't use Fury, yeah? Painters on primaries, not primaries. Painters on primaries. Left. Primary. Fly left. Fly yes. yeah, Flycatcher primary is going to be pure five Tyrion in the pure Ten five. seconds. Ten seconds. Links on. Links are up. Five, four, three, two, one, go, go. Okay. David. Roger. Cool. Uh, uh Hoodie, go for Glare. Flying man's been yeah, off. Go for Glare. Uh, dark screen, dark screen. Roger. Go for Glare. They are whole tank. Do not get underestimate Roger. them. Hold tank guys, guys, remember? Glare Bruix is primary. Flycatchers need, need to be dropping bombers, okay, at this point. Coral, primary. After this Bruix Navy, because then we're going for the... Tell on your tank. We're going for the other Brutix after this one goes down. Other Brutix. Third out in the Brutix is primary. Third out in the Brutix is primary. Third out in Brutix is primary. Remember, they have no logic. We can heat our DPS immediately, yeah? You see him on third out? Roger. After that, we're going to go for Calder in the Brutix Navy. He... Bombers down. Roger. Roger. Calderone in the Brutix Navy will be primary after this regular Brutix goes down, guys. Remember, these are whole tanks. We need to keep going. Two boosts left. Roger. We're gonna lose our Scorpion. Make sure you're not close to them, guys, yeah? Hoodie, you're pretty... Uh, actually, no, it's just Nuka. That's I'm fine. fine, I'm fine. I'm 37 from the closest. Mm -hmm. uh, after this, we're gonna go for ca um, Calderon, Brux, Navy Prime. Calderon, Brux, Navy Prime. Make sure to reassign your Sandrons, guys. Keep that. Roger. Put them on Dereth. Put them on Dereth. Yeah, put them on Dereth. Put them on Dereth. Death. Roger. Come on, guys. Uh, the flycatchers can swap to Furies if you want, yeah? Just... You can be stationary at range, yeah? Don't be a retard and, like, run into them. Tabo, how's your ASB reload going? Um, half. Not gonna make it. Roger. Send those bots back to whoever needs them. Uh, it's... I'm losing ECM drones, but guys, just put ECM drones on Denieri in the Brix Navy, yeah? We're gonna go for the other Brix Navy after this. Roger. Brix Navy primary. Denier. De Death in there. Death They're in gonna make a reload. Roger, death in the Bricks Navy primary. Just run as soon as you get it. Denier, yeah, it's fine. Uh, not scrum, just left dialogue. 
By what? Uh, Megatrons. So... Put your ECM Jones the Megas, put your, take your ECM Jones off the Burixes. Are you, uh, um, are you neutered, Tebble? Yep, yes, yes, yes. So they both have nukes, yeah? Yep, yep, yep. Cool. Do guys, remember, just put your, put your ECM Jones on the Bur on the Mega Navies, yeah? ECM Jones on the Burix Navies. Not, oh, uh, sorry, on the Mega Navies, not the Burix Navies. They reload again. Oh, your, your ASB's a hit reload. Yes, hit reload again. Roger, that's fine. There's only two of them left, guys. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Starting to run out of tank heat. Wood Vulcan, Wood Vulcan, Wood Vulcan. Okay. Mega Navy. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Try to pull <laughs> range of Magus as, as much as you can. No, not won't have cap for MBD. No, no, just just keep just the cap. slow boat. Oh, yep, yep, yep. that, that bomber's will polarize by the way. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Just keep going, just keep going, guys. Copy load again. Wood Vulcan, everything. Don't fire in dark. Just everything on wood. Vulcan. What are you on gun reload? Yeah, I'm on gun reload as well. <laughs> Check your range. Stop shooting dark. Stop shooting dark. Just wood Vulcan primary. Yeah, everything on wood Vulcan. Their whole tank. We can't afford to split DPS. Devil's about to go down. I think. Uh, about ten seconds left to reload. Come on. Won't have, have hit no, though. Have no cop. It's fine. They don't, they don't, they don't. Uh, roger, oh, roger, 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 roger. Uh, only Ido should be close to them. Okay, Dark, uh, that, hoodie, I'm moving to within 30, mm -hmm. 20k, actually. Yeah. Now there's only one of them. There's, yeah, we got this, guys. Good job. I've been a damage brand the whole time. Cool. Come check them all. Remember that he's hit pointed to, uh, yeah. Nice work, dudes. Nice work. Good job, guys. Oh my god, that. that... Stone that falls off your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck yes. Yep, good fights. But uh, Bobby should have gassed the bombers to swap to Fury. Did you swap to Rage, sorry, once? It was just. Yeah, yeah, I swapped to Rage. Uh, I, I, I just stayed with Faction, I didn't want to get too yeah, close just in case they had uh, droppers or anything. The, I mean... Fury, the Fury still have 68k range with a, with a um, extended script. Yeah, I mean, with the flycatchers, it's fine. We don't have any projection mods on the Manticores. Yeah. Yeah, pulling drones, pulling drones. Um, I, I, can we grab the polarized launchers? I, I need some. Yeah, I'm going for them. I should have been on that side. Anyway. Lost the ship there. But, oh well. <clears throat> tur yeah, I had like five tur seconds. Tur turtle batteries. I had cap problems, like I couldn't run all reps full time. Yeah. I was tempted to ask Ido to bump the Mega Navy or something, but I figured it wouldn't do much. Cruiser bumping. Are you, are you serious? You didn't go in? Just go in, mate. Oh, it's, it's, I mean, once the once the Burixes are done, you can go in. They will not kill you. You will be able to local tank them alone. And... Astra, actually, yeah. yeah can I go FK for two minutes? Uh, yeah, you can go FK if you want. Okay, I've got three polarized launchers going for the ores. Cool. Yeah, my fun gun for Atacami, go for one to the left. Go go for whatever. The other one. Uh, I I thought I'd actually burn up my, my RTs in that one, but... I nearly burnt my launchers. I burnt my auto target out. That's fine. And the launchers have got 93%. Hide out your finger. It's a euphemism. Yeah, full whole tank, like I figured. That was good. Good job, guys. Uh, we can um, probably.